Since its release in late 2020, the Quest 2 has been one of the most controversial headsets of all time, with major pros and cons that need to be addressed. So after two years of owning this device, I'm here to break it down to see if this device is the right headset for you. In case you weren't aware, the pricing point of the Quest 2 is one of the best features of the headset. Sort of. When you purchase the Quest 2, there are a few things that come right out of the box. First, obviously, the headset, which has the default strap, which, in my opinion, is one of the worst things, hardware-wise, about the headset. But we'll get more into that later. You also get two controllers. They each have very good weight, are easy to use, and easy to get the hang of. In some cases, the headset will come with some games and apps that would otherwise cost money, but I believe this is only the case in physical stores like Best Buy, and it will stay on the box. The price for this standard package would be between $300 and $400 at the making of this video. But with the Quest 3 coming out, it would not be surprising to me if the price dropped a little bit later this year, but again, more on that later. A $300 headset which has the capabilities of the Quest 2, which also includes the option of either being a standalone headset or its very own PC VR headset is absolutely insane. If a pricey headset to hook up to your computer, which isn't even an option for most people, isn't a possibility for you, the Quest 2 is still a powerful, capable device on its own. With this as the main selling point of the Quest 2, here are some of my only complaints and some things that people don't seem to consider. After owning the Quest 2 for about two years and using it for PC VR for about one, easily my least favorite part about the headset is the default head strap. I cannot stress this enough. If you buy a Quest 2, please, by all means, buy a Kiwi head strap as well. This video is not sponsored by Kiwi, but even the premium strap that is offered by Oculus is really overpriced, and from what I've heard, not all that worth it. Motion sickness is also something people say is a huge deal breaker for VR in general, but before you stick with this, know that there's a ton of help to prevent motion sickness in VR, which a lot of games don't even cause. A lot of games have a setting that lowers the FOV of the viewer whenever something fast-paced is happening, which heavily decreases motion sickness and actually actually adds to the immersion, so much so that it's automatic in most games. So don't not get a headset because of motion sickness, because there are plenty of ways to counteract that. And if you want a video about that, be sure to let me know down in the comments. One popular question among new VR users is what games will actually be available. Luckily for the Quest 2, there's a variety of options, even without a PC and link cable. Oculus on its own has a wide range of games that only Quest users can play, including one of my favorites, Echo VR. Outside of the Oculus specific games, a surprising number of games are also available on the store, and you can also change your settings on the headset to allow you to get games off of App Lab. This includes games that developers outside of large companies have made, and actually houses some of the best games available on the Quest. One thing to remember, especially for social apps like VR Chat, is thinking of VR apps as games isn't exactly a great idea. Think of them as places. You'll talk and interact with real people, and if you're watching this video to see if you should get a headset for your kid, please keep this in mind, as it does raise a lot of concerns. But if you are not worried about this, then I can assure you that the Quest will offer a wide range of games that you can easily fall in love with, and if you need help finding some, I have a few videos covering that. Of course, purchasing a link cable will offer a lot more options, but again, this is all on the standalone Quest. Another thing to keep in mind is the release of the Quest 3 later this year. Probably. Now, while we don't really know the price point and all of its features, we can definitely expect an upgraded version of the Quest 2, but with a much higher price. Now, if you want to wait and see if the Quest 3 lives up to the hype, or see if the release even affects the price of the Quest 2, that might not be a terrible idea, it just depends how interested you are. Safety is also overlooked sometimes, both internet safety and physical safety, and we'll talk about both, starting with physical. First off, no. VR will not burn your eyes out. Could it cause eye strain? M maybe, but this can be really easily avoided. As far as running into walls or anything else, I personally haven't had many issues. Just make sure that you have your guardian on, which turns the cameras on when you step outside the boundary, making sure you don't run into anything important. As far as internet safety, you no longer need a Facebook account to use it, which is really good news and reassurance for some people, for some weird reason. I have not had any privacy issues in VR, but as long as you follow the basic rules of the internet in general, like not giving your real name, name, address, or anything like that, you shouldn't have any problems. While I kind of touched base on the Quest 3, a lot is still very unknown, which makes talking about it a little unclear. If you're looking for a headset that is wireless, has similar capabilities, and a similar price as the Quest 2, let's not forget that the Quest 2 can also be used as a full-on PC VR headset if you use AirLink or even use one of the link cables. But if you are considering other headsets, here are my thoughts on that. Personally, I don't see any other wireless headset that could replace my Quest 2. Yes, even the Quest Pro, which is a whole other can of worms to unpack, but not in this video. If a 
wireless headset is your only option, it's not a bad idea to pick up a Quest 2. It is really fun, and I'm never gonna forget the first feeling that I got when I put on the headset for the first time. I booted up some games that I got recommended and just tried it, and it was truly magical. But as far as wired headsets go, there are a lot more possibilities. The Valve Index and the HTC Vive are just a couple. No matter which direction you go with your VR adventures, I know very few people who actually ended up regretting their purchase. If you have a PC that can run VR, which you can always check with a Steam VR test, you're entering a brand new world that will change your life. You just have to let it. VR is truly an amazing thing, and I get it. It's not for everyone, and that's completely fine. But if there's anything I've learned from spending about two years in VR and even growing this channel is that VR is a way to see the world in a different way and not just the world but people. Many people use VR as a way to escape. Because of that, the people that you meet and the things that you experience will forever be a side of humanity that the quote unquote real world can never give you. Despite popular belief, I'm not like a huge VR nerd. I don't spend every waking moment in VR and sometimes I go weeks or even months without it. But there is something that I'm not really sure how to explain and if anyone knows what I'm I'm talking about, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And with that, I hope you all had an awesome 2022 and are about to have an amazing 2023. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh my god! Let's go!